Moyo will go down in the history of our beloved country as a patriotic, consistent and persistent national and revolutional leader who played an indelible part in our liberation struggle. His lifelong service to the party, ZAN PF and government, was informed by his unwavering desire and commitment to save the people of this great country, Zimbabwe. He carries to this sacred shrine and a final resting place an indisputable track record of appreciating and indeed living the ethos and ideals of a revolutionary movement, ZANPF. He saved his country wholeheartedly and did his part, understanding the adage that Nika Inova Kwanevenevayo. He patriotically undertook and sustained national wide and international programs for the dissemination of party and government policies and programs. A cadre always available for deployment, no matter the task or the duty. The late SK Moyo was instrumental in demystifying the false and narrative, uh, negative narratives by detractors against our great motherland, Zimbabwe. Through a robust and effective media, he is open for business to carry on with the good work of advancing the national interest, as was articulated by our late national hero, Comrade SK. In the late SK, we have lost a true patriot, an astute and a rare breed of spokesmen and a pan-African voice. He was a man who articulated with clarity the mission of our party and our government with regards to uniting the nation as well as organizing and inspiring people to be masters of their own destiny. His demeanor and personality exuded the nature of the de de devout Christian that he was. The late national hero exhibited love as described in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 from verse 4. SK was patient and kind. He did not envy or boast he was not proud and did not dishonor others. Neither was he self-seeking nor easily angered. Those who had the privilege to know SK Moyo will attest to the fact that he did not delight in evil but rejoiced in the truth. He always hoped and always persevered. In his honor, let us as a nation across all provinces rise beyond misplaced perceptions of differences and divisions. We are diverse but one people. Let us unite as liberals and servants of our great country to build the Zimbabwe we all want brick upon brick, stone upon stone.
guided by our cultural and Christian obligation to possess and work our land. Let us be productive in every sphere and remain vigilant against imperialistic exploitation and continuously dismantle its bases and biases. Fellow mourners, comrades and friends, the, na the late national hero, Comrade S.K. Moyo, was born in Plum Tree, Matevelaland, South Province, on 1st October 1945, in Mr. Robert Kaya Ngulani Moyo, uh, uh, born, born to Mr. Robert Kaya Ngulani Moyo and Mrs. Tsagara Moyo. He completed his secondary school education in Plum Tree before enrolling at Fletcher High School in the then Guelo town. Between 1966 and 1967, he worked as a research assistant at Impilo Hospital. He left the country for Zambia to join the liberation struggle in early 1968. While in Zambia, the Zimbabwe African People's Union ZAPU leadership, after seeing his potential, resolved to send him to further his studies at the University of Zambia. He was to later graduate with a diploma in social sciences at the University of Zambia. Thereafter, at the behest of the party ZAPU and in recognition of his budding intellectual prowess, the late Comrade S.K. Moyo enrolled for a Bachelor of Arts degree in the social sciences at Makerere University in Uganda in 1970. Upon completion of his degree, he lectured in Uganda, whilst also doubling as the Zapu chief representative in that country. This role served as a catalyst in the creation of a wide base of ideologically and politically conscious young revolutionary. This Uganda-educated pool of cadres was later deployed in various roles to advance our struggle for independence, as well as in the public service after independence. This aspect of the legacy of Comrade S.K. should inspire those sons and daughters of Zimbabwe in the diaspora to leverage their roles and institutions to advance the growth and prosperity of their motherland and its people. The late Ambassador National Hero returned to Lusaka in 1975 and was subsequently appointed to be the Secretary and the Special Assistant to the then Zapo President the late father of the nation and the national hero, Dr. Joshua Mkabuko Nyongolo Chibwejite Zankomo. He underwent military and intelligence training in the then German, German Democratic Republic, GDR, and undertook several other courses in Cuba and the USSR, now the Russian Federation. He rose through the ranks of ZAPU structures to become a member of the Revolutionary Party Council as well as a member of the PF ZAPU Central Committee. In 1977, saw the late Comrade SK surviving the cowardly and the brutal attack by the Ian Smith regime in Zambia, which was aimed at dampening the revolutionary plans of the party. As the assistant to the late Dr. Joshua Komo, Comrade S.K. Moyo was part of the delegations 
to several high-level meetings, including the Geneva meeting, the Malta and Lancaster House conferences in 1976, 1978, and 1979, respectively. It was during the Lancaster House conference that the late Comrade S.K. Moyo, along with the late Ariston Maguranyanga Chambati, were the support staff to the late father Zimbabwe, Comrade J.N. M. Como, while the current ambassador to Cuba, Comrade Gina, Ignatius Muzimba, and myself provided support and advisory services to the late former President R.J. Mugabe. It was at these meetings that we made explicit calls and demands for majority rule, self-determination and independence for the black majority from the yokes of colonial operation, uh, oppression. At independence in 1980, he joined the government as an assistant secretary in the Ministry of Home Affairs, rising through the ranks to undersecretary in the Ministry of Justice in 1983. He then moved to the Ministry of Health and Child Welfare in 1984 and promoted to Deputy Permanent Secretary in that ministry in 1987. During his years of service, he distinguished himself as a loyal and patriotic public servant and a bureaucrat. He never used his proximity to the leadership to advance or pursue narrow self-interest or a counter-revolutionary agenda. He never exhibited a sense of entitlement his career was informed by hard, honest work and his unflinching loyalty to the nation and not driven by the pursuit of promotions or holding senior portfolios in the public service. This trait must be emulated by bureaucrats and the public servants. In 1989, the late national hero was awarded the Liberation Decoration Gold and Silver Medals in recognition of his role during the country's protracted armed liberation struggle. During the same year, he briefly left the public service to become the first head of corporate affairs of the Development Trust of Zimbabwe, DTZ. which was founded by the late Vice President, Comrade Dr. J. M. N. Como. Following the Unity Accord, he was elected a member of the ZANU-PF Central Committee at the 1989 Party Congress. In the 1990 general elections, the late national hero contested and they won the Wulilima Mangwe South Parliamentary seat for ZAN PF. Drawing from his vast experience and the wealth of knowledge of the public service sector, the late Comrade SK became a member of the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Public Accounts and the Indigenization of the National Economic Economy Committee. This was a critical portfolio at a time when the country was redefining the socio-economic discourse in relation to the land issue and the need for the black majority to have a greater stake in the economy. The late Comrade Moyo was appointed Deputy Minister of Industry and Commerce in 1992, while in 1994, he became the Deputy Secretary for Administration in the Politburo. Following ZANPF re-election in the 1995 general elections and Commerce Simon Kayamoe's retention of the 
Ulilima Mangwe South constituency, he became the Minister of Transport and Energy. In July 1997, the late Comrade Kayamoyo took over as Minister of Mines, Environment and Tourism with one of his main tasks being to oversee the major of the Minister of the major of the ministries of mines, environment, and tourism. In December 2000, late National Hero was appointed Deputy Secretary for Legal Affairs in the Politburo, a position he held until his elevation to be a substantive Politburo member in 2004. After his appointment to the position of Zimbabwe's ambassador to South Africa, the Kingdom of Lesotho and Mauritius in 2001, Robert K. retained his position in the Politburo, attesting to the. <laughs> the late Comrade S. K. Moyo left diplomatic service in July 2010 after landing the ZAN PF national chairmanship. As the national chairman, Comrade SK executed his role with diplomacy, tact, and astuteness, which was often punctuated with humor, often cracking jo jokes and breaking into signature song, e party, ea senche. Sorry, he party here. Se 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 within the National Disciplinary Committee. His chairmanship of the party's National People Conferences and Congresses demonstrated his rich wisdom, adherence to, and understanding of the party constitution, rules, and procedures. In various roles within the party, he manifested studious attention to detail he took time to study the party. He was a leader not swayed by emotion. I exhort the cadres and leaders of the party to deliberately seek to nature and raise the level of their understanding of the party constitution rules and procedures, as well as the silent organizational culture and ethos of our revolutionary party. On the diplomatic and external relations front, the late national era engaged several diplomatic missions on issues relating to the land question and agrarian reform as well as the party's revolutionary mission and objectives. He was always instrumental in deepening the fraternal relations amongst former liberation movements within the region and other progressive organizations the world over. In September 2013, the late national hero, Komet Kaya Moyo, was appointed the senior minister of state in the office of the president of the cabinet and reassigned to become the minister of policy culture of the new and emerging generation of heroes and heroines who must avail themselves to be deployed to utilize their capabilities, their skills and competencies for the development, modernization and desolization of our great country, Zimbabwe. 
My fellow mourners, comrades, and friends, and the sixth national people's congress services and also served as energy and the power development minister after the advent of the second republic i reassigned him to the post of national party spokesperson a position he held until his untimely passing on we stand proud of the indelible works and footprints left behind by our departed gallant son of the soil, a national hero, SK. His scholarly works and the publications in the form of Mr. Speaker, sir, and service to my country remain a rich repository of knowledge and information bequeathed to current and the future generations. The courage and consistency demonstrated in liberating and developing Zimbabwe inspires as a nation to pursue our national vision 2030 towards transforming in a better the lives our skills competencies capabilities and a positive action to build our country Zimbabwe brick upon brick stone upon stone now that the 2021-2022 summer cropping season has begun, let us productively utilize our land and record yet again another bumper harvest. As Zimbabweans, we are a great and hard-working people. We are fearless and the brave warriors who never give up until victory is attained. This is the legacy that the late Kome Salmon Kayamoyo and the men are the departed heroes and heroines of our great motherland have bequeathed to us. Let us therefore continue to revere and safeguard it as we journey towards Vision 20. 30. Our culture of non-violence, our culture for peace, along with our values of unity, harmony, love and respect, must continue to be the fundamental building blocks that distinguish us as a people and as a nation. This is more important As the nation prepares itself, public health protocols, guidelines, and procedures for containing the COVID-19 pandemic, we must never let our guard down. Meanwhile, I urge those who are here to be vaccinated to get junkward. There are enough vaccines in the country for us to attain herd immunity. Finally, to our dearly departed national hero, we say, Amba kushle kawe la makakawe. Famba zakanaka gamba remagamba. 
Go well, son of the soil. Farewell, our eminent diplomat, our party stalwart, articulate national party spokesperson, humble and ever smiling political giant. Yours was a life well lived and a service to our great nation, Zimbabwe, and well executed. Rest in eternal peace, our beloved Comrade SK. You will be deeply mixed. God bless you all. God bless Zimbabwe. I thank you. Yet doves, a mali ego five years dollars go pelang and yanga. Oil letter why it doves. Ye, Likuniso, it doves. Is an elisa whoopa equator, Eliza Gumela, Kuko Gongo Patelan and Lomteto, Okokela, Ama legal documents, Ama accident damage claims, contractual damages, no Gumela Gumteto and Daba Gunda as a civil, criminal, the labor. I police le is a Gumela and Jaloena, Lomgako, Kanela Bantuanabaliminaga, a figure twenty three, Yoguzalo, Kumbe, Lokuvesa.